Jesus' holy name. And once you're born again, all new, you'll never be the same. You won't be carrying all of your heavy, sinful weight, because Jesus paid it all. Then it might change your fate. Not everyone you know or meet will be believing. Most of them hold fast to the one. Psalm 119, verse 11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The more we have the word of God, the farther away sin will be. Uh, if we store it up in our hearts, if we treasure God's word in our hearts, uh, God's word will keep us from sin, and sin will keep us from his word. Welcome to this edition of Coffee House Theology, where we discuss God, theology, and all things pertaining to life over cups of coffee. I am your host, Jose Ruiz, and I am joined by Josiah Ruiz, your co-host. And uh, we are bringing you an episode. Uh, we are actually live right now on Facebook. Um, so uh, I don't know if people on Facebook can hear us, but uh, there's already somebody watching. Oh, they went away. They went away. <laughs> So, uh, we've never done this, and my son's like, I'm extra nervous, but uh, it's okay. Um, uh, I'm going to check on my phone, see if I can watch the live. Um, I don't even know how to do that. So, we're trying something new. Uh, we're... Uh, the, this episode will be come out on Wednesday uh, morning, uh, so we're giving uh, anybody on Facebook in the Coffee House Theology group, we're giving you a sneak peek, I guess. Um, so we are, uh, how have you been, Josiah? I've been good. Uh, I've been... Uh, I made like a new commitment to try to memorize as much of the New Testament as I can because of several reasons like the the first one uh when we were little my brother and me we uh my dad he has this list I, I, unfortunately we didn't go all the way through it but it's a list of bible verses to memorize and i've learned most of them like john 1 1 or john 1 1 through 18 uh first corinthians 11 23 to 26 uh and that um, along with other things inspired me to realize that I like like on your on this pod, podcast you know a lot of scripture and you can just say it off the top of your head I want to be able to do that and not just so I can show off or something like that but so I can show people what I believe and how I know that this is part of my belief yeah it's uh I I, I know there's people like that 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 will use scripture to show off and, um, you know, uh, try to impress people. But that's, that's not why, uh, I've memorized passages. I, I memorize passages because, you know, when you're ministering to somebody or you're, uh, talking to somebody about a temptation or you're talking to somebody about, uh, struggles about uh, lack of faith about you know uh, doubt uh, whatever it is uh, there is a passage in the Bible that speaks to whatever human condition we are going through uh, if we are going through I mean you read the book of Psalms and the Psalms are prayers the Psalms are um, uh they're crying out to God. It's lament. Their songs. Uh, you know, David was discouraged, and a lot of them start with "Save me, O God. Where are you, my God?" Uh, so these uh, passages speak to the human condition. These passages speak to uh, every uh, emotion, every uh, situation. Uh, they, they speak to, um, you know, doubt. Uh, so I, I noticed that Pedro Gutierrez is watching. Hey, hey bro, uh, can you do me a favor? I don't know if you can hear us. 
uh, from Facebook Live. Uh, if you can, can you like wave or do some emojis? Um, and if not, probably means you can't hear us. <laughs> so, uh, welcome to this edition of Coffee House Theology. Um, I, 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 oh yeah. So you can. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Appreciate that. Uh, so the reason to memorize scripture, uh, if you think about uh, when Jesus went in Matthew 4 uh, and he was tempted by the devil, right? How did Jesus respond to the devil? With scripture. With scripture, right? So did he have a scroll? Because that's what they had back in the day. He didn't go with a scroll fasting and no, he, you know, uh, the Jewish person, the average Jew uh, would have to, they knew like the first five books of the Old Covenant, the Pentateuch. They knew the, the, the books of Moses. I actually okay? didn't know that. Yeah. And so uh, that is what Jesus, and he, he answered the devil with a psalm. Okay, because the devil used the psalm. Arriba Nicaragua. <laughs> yes, brother. Thank you for watching from way over there. Uh, we ask you to watch on YouTube and Rumble uh, when it comes out on Wednesday. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. So uh, uh, we are, for those of you who will be watching this Wednesday, uh, we are uh, live on Facebook. And so this is, today's what? Monday, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Monday. we typically uh, record Mondays and we program it to come out on Wednesday. So uh, my brother Pedro in Nicaragua, I think he's ahead on time too. How, how, how many hours are you uh, ahead of us or are you behind us? Because today's Monday, and right now, it's 8.22 p.m. Yes. Pedro, ¿me escuchas? So, yes, you, you, uh, Jesus answered Satan with the word of God, and he, he knew it by memory, right? Uh, and, and you say, wow, he's God in the flesh. Yes, but. Oh, two hours? Okay. Two hours ahead or two hours behind? I don't know. Ahead. ahead. Okay. All right. So, uh, Jesus uh, answers the devil with the word of God. And he, 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 the Bible says that he grew in stature and wisdom. Okay. So even though he was the son of God, he applied himself to knowing the scriptures, to understanding God's word, uh, to memorizing God's word, because that was the culture. So um, we, uh, we need to study God's word. We need to memorize God's word. We need to... Uh, you know, study to show ourselves approved, a workman. It, it, it says, study to show yourself approved unto God, not unto man. I don't, I don't want to memorize God's word so I can show off. No, it's, it's for God. It's, it's that, it's telling God that we love His word, that we treasure His word, we store up His word. How I love your law, the Bible says, right. Uh, your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. So uh, when you are memorizing scripture and storing scripture, uh, it's, 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 it's for God. We live for God. We die for God. We, whatever we do, we do for the glory of God. And that is what we, that's why we should treasure scripture store it up in our hearts so that we don't sin against our holy god our holy father you know and you know when temptation comes your way you can you have a passage in your mind mm -hmm. you know you have the word of god 
I, which is living and abiding forever, you know? Oh, I was going to say, I you made me remember right now. Uh, when we were little, my dad would sometimes say to us, um, do you want to hear God speak? And me, excited like anyone would be to hear God actually talking, was like, yeah, of course. Uh, how do I hear him talk? You know, he said, read the Bible out loud. And it sounds kind of funny, but it's true. That's the way God has revealed himself to us. I mean, theoretically speaking, yes, he could talk to us like he did to the prophets in the Old Testament. But the main way he speaks to us today is through his word. Well, and, oh, sorry. And I, Well, I would, I would say in answer to that, um, Scripture does tell us in the New Covenant how God speaks. If you turn to Hebrews... Uh, Hebrews 1, and the very first Verse. verses, read it, read it for us. Hebrews 1. This film on Hebrews James. Uh, hold on, I'm still turning there. I'm at the end of Hebrews. So am I. Hebrews 1, you have Bibles. Okay, uh, verse 1 to what? Uh, it, no, just the very first verse. Okay. Long ago. Go ahead. And many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But then verse 2 says, But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. What is that saying? That now God has spoken to us through his Son. Well, what is it saying in the first verse? Oh, sorry, that, that he spoke through the prophets. That's, he spoke in many ways. It says, yes. long ago, at many times... And in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, so in Hebrews, the whoever the author is, uh, there's a lot of speculation. It could Paul, it could be Paul. Uh, some people say uh, Luke wrote it, and it was a sermon that Paul was preaching. So he, these were he was recording uh, Paul's sermon. So, long ago, and at many times, and in many ways, so God spoke through visions, through audible voices, but it says, but in these last days, he has, past tense, spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also, he created the world. So the word of God, which is one of the titles of Jesus Christ, the word of God has finally spoken. Right? So we don't, uh, so when, when we say we have the word of God here, you know, uh, Paul says that all scripture is Theanustas, God breathe. That means that it is uh, God breathe, and it's inspired by God and is profitable. It's sufficient. There's uh, actually in theology there's a doctrine called the sufficiency of Scripture. Okay, that Scripture is enough, right? He told uh, Timothy, Timothy. You were trained in the scriptures. You were taught the scriptures by your grandmother, Lewis, and your mother. So godly women taught this young man, Timothy, as, even as a boy. They taught him the scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation. Not uh, audible voices, not visions, not signs. What? The word of God. Jesus often told the Pharisees, you, an evil and wicked generation seeks for a sign, seeks for signs. We should not be evil and wicked and seek signs. We need to, uh, Hebrew says we have the more sure word, right? Because now it's written down for us. It's preserved. Jude says that the faith that was delivered it was revealed. It was handed down. That's the word that we know that we should contend. We should, like, 
wrestle, grapple, fight for that word. So that's why we should memorize scripture because that is how God speaks to us. It's through his written word, right? So many people say they have uh, uh, God spoke to them, God did this, and it never came to pass. You know, today, I'm talking about today, people say, oh, God spoke to me and said this, or he told me to marry this girl, or, and, and, and it never happens. And then, who looks bad? God, God blamed by people, by the world, you know, and, and it's, it, it's God's name, that's speaking in vain. That's speaking in vain for God. That's taking God's name in vain. When you're saying something is of God and it's not. So that's why we need to be students of the word. We should master the word. You know, uh, next to the Bible, uh, the most popular book, uh, not in these times, but in future uh, previous generations, the most popular book, you know what it is? The Pilgrim's Progress. Yes. And it was written by a man who had no degrees, but he was a beaver of God's word. He was in God's word. He knew God's word. You know who they call the Prince of Preachers? Uh, Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon. He had no degrees. He didn't want degrees because he said he didn't want the approval of man. But... This man had a 25,000 word vocabulary. This man knew the scriptures thoroughly. So, uh, you know, you don't have to go out and get in debt and get a degree. You can know the scriptures for yourself. You, you don't have to be a Hebrew or Greek scholar. Uh, hardly anybody is, you know. Uh, this isn't... Uh the Roman Roman Catholic Church, you know, not, not the Roman Catholic Church today, but when, in Luther's time when they prevented people from reading the Word of God, right, it's not right. that anymore. We right. have it. We have the Word of God accessible to us. And even even the priests of those times, they hardly didn't know uh, the Word of God because it was the Word of God was not in every home, and it was chained to pulpits, and so and it was written in Latin, so... A lot of priests didn't even have access to the Word of God, um, you know. Luck, you know, by God's grace and providence, uh, Luther had the Word of God, and he, uh, you know, mastered uh, the Hebrew and and the Greek, and he, uh, you know, he was a doctor of theology, and, and yes, good. Praise God for scholars that do know how to read and translate. And but once we have a, everybody, once we have an accurate version in English, right? Like the ESV, which is which I love, or the the BSB, which I sent out for uh, to rebind uh, in shark skin. Um, you have a, a, a good English translation it's 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 about hermeneutics it's about rightly interpreting god's word it's it's knowing the context uh knowing who he's speaking to um you know and using all these principles so uh how do you how do you have you memorized uh well can you say second john for me sure you can close your eyes or um, whatever no I, i'll keep my eyes open um it starts off like this, Second John, the elder to the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever. The, oh boy, I'm already screwing this up. Um, be with us forever. The grace, grace, mercy, and peace. Thank you, Dad. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Father's Son, in truth and love. I rejoice greatly to find some of your children walking in the truth, just as we were commanded by the Father. And now I ask you, dear lady, not as though I are writing to you a new commandment, 
but the one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment, just as you have heard from the beginning, so that you should walk in it. For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ into the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you may not lose what we have worked for, but may win a full reward. Everyone who goes on ahead and does not abide in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever abides in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring you this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting. For whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works. Though I have much to write to you, I would rather not use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to come to you and talk face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister greet you. Yeah, for, except for that little part uh, on verse 3, you got everything right. Um, yeah, I'm starting with the, the smallest books of the New Testament. And Second John is the smallest, so I started there. And then you memorized Third John? Yes. Okay, so Second John, who's Antichrist? Those who do not, um, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. That's right. So anyone who denies that Jesus Christ came in the flesh is Antichrist, according to the Scripture. This is see, this is a scriptural uh, definition of Antichrist, folks. Mm. Uh, even then, and he's saying is the Antichrist. He's not saying a Antichrist. He's saying the Antichrist. So uh, get into the word. Uh, as a matter of fact, if I was to ask you guys uh, where Antichrist is, and most people say the book of Revelation. And is Antichrist in the book of Revelation? No. No. See, we, we have these ideas, we have these conceptions, uh, we haven't read the word for ourselves, and so therefore we take what people say and we just repeat it ad nauseum. And, you know, when if you repeat a lie long enough, people think it's truth, and it's that's not the case. So uh, we, we need to study for ourselves to show ourselves approved Workmen that need not be ashamed, that rightly divide the word of God, the word of truth. Um, and it's only the word of God is the word of truth. So, uh, according to this verse, this passage in Second John, Antichrist is the person who denies uh, the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. It's right here in verse 7. So, uh, I, I'm, I'm older now. <laughs> I used to be able to memorize, memorize, uh, so many passages. Um, you know, uh, and for me, I had a lot of, uh, passages memorized in the King James. So, uh, you know, uh, in, in King James, I, I memorized the entire, uh, the rich man and Lazarus passage, uh, from uh, Luke seventeen, is it? No, it's Luke sixteen nineteen, oh. starting in sixteen nineteen. For there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, in verse 23, and in hell he lifted up his eyes and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Abraham said unto him, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. So, uh, I, I don't use King James Version. I preach from the ESV. Uh, I teach from the ESV. Uh, that's my go-to uh, version. Um, so, but... You know, age does <laughs> affect you. So memorize as much as you can mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's a lot harder for me now to memorize. And I'm, I'm trying to memorize uh, Second John. 
I'm, I actually use a software called, uh, I'm going to look it up. It's a Bible memory app. It's called it's Bible Memory System. Uh, and it's uh, on Kindle. It's called Scripture Typer. And so what you do is uh, you, you type the first letter of every word. First you see it, and then it gives you blanks. And then you, you, know, you, tr you try to memorize it that way. You, first you type it, then you memorize it, and then you master it by having none, none of the words. But again, you're just typing the first letter of every word. Um, and so it, it helps, it helps. Uh, so it helps this old man right here. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever tools are available, I mean, uh, I like to listen to God's word. You know, the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Uh, this is why I, I love that at church, we do a lot of scripture reading or right now we're, uh, before, uh, when we do announcements and prayer and um, we do a scripture reading. And right now we're going through the Psalms. So la uh, yes, yesterday, Sunday, we read uh, Psalm 16. So we're in the Psalms. We're in the book of Psalms. We're reading them in, you know, chronological order uh, or, the you know, numbered. Um, and so... We are we're going through a psalm every Sunday. Uh, we read the psalms every Sunday. So uh, you're getting the word of God. You're hearing the word of God. The word of God, like I said, psalms are prayers. Psalms are songs. And so you hear prayers of faith. You hear uh, David start off or, or Solomon or whoever the author of the psalm is. He first he's like, where are you, God? You know, are you going to save me? And by the end, by the time he finishes the psalm, he's, he's, he's remembered who God is. You know, he appeals to the character, the nature of God, and he uh, is, is um, he's strengthened by, because he's reminded himself of who God is. And so he... Uh, he has faith by the time he's done, and it's a whole different uh, attitude that he has uh, by the time he's done with the psalm. So we, we do a lot of scripture reading, and, and, and we need the word of God. We don't need just one verse. We, we need, even when I preach a topical message, right now uh, it's a blessing we're in Galatians, uh, and and. So much rich gospel proclamation that that we we walk through Galatians and, and Paul is affirming the resurrection, the power of God in the gospel, um, the grace of Christ, um, and so it, it's very rich. And we're walking through chunks of scripture, right? Uh, we're teaching expositionally, but even when I preach a topical message, it's not like the seven keys for a happy marriage. We're, uh, we're I, at least me, I try to teach doctrinally. So I've preached on justification by faith alone. I've preached on how I've preached on the Trinity. Um, right, right before, was it Christmas or right after Christmas on the 26th? I, I preached on the Trinity. And um, so, but we're in the word and I'm not just giving you one little verse. You know, we're reading scripture. We need to take in scripture. We need to hear scripture. So I love uh, the U version. Uh, I love hearing the word of God. I, I, uh, when we're going through the book, Slaying Leviathan, which we will pick up on uh, next week, uh, because this topic of the Word of God is very important. Um, so the U version uh, or, or Audible, I love listening to Audible and following along. Uh, you know, the ear gate, the eye gate, 
you're taking in the word of God, you're, you're hearing uh, this book read to you, and you're reading, and, you know, in the early church, when they got a letter, they were hearing it all together. They were, and they were not just, you know, the elder to the elect lady and her children. Okay, we'll see you next Sunday. No, it was, they read the entire letter. What do you guys do at home when you get a letter? Uh, do you just read Dear Jose and then, oh, I'll put it down. And No, right? You read the entire letter. I, I, I don't know people that write letters anymore, but uh, I, I know when somebody writes me, uh, like my cousin, Pedro, when he writes me, and he writes so nice, like handwriting. <laughs> It's like calligraphy, uh, but he writes, uh, you know, hand, nice handwritten letter to me, two, three pages. I read the whole thing in one sitting, and that is the way the Word of God was read when they got a letter like Galatians, when they got Second John. You know, they didn't read one little sentence and... Yeah, no. they didn't have chapters and verses. Right. That right. was added later. It's a tool and it's helpful, but um, reading the letter as it is is important. But, and and it also can be a stumbling block because of the way uh, the people that, that divide or they put the, the headings on Scripture. So like right here in my Bible, Letter of Jude, it doesn't have an introduction. It's just a text, but it says, greeting, Right. And judgment on false teachers. Well, a lot of those times we think these are, um, uh, that's the division. And they didn't have that division. And sometimes we lose uh, something when we separate uh, that verse. So, for example, uh, when I preached on Galatians, um, it had uh, verse 10 uh I think it had it separate um, from, no, it had it with verse 6 through 9 uh, of Galatians. And then, but I thought it went more better with, uh, more better. <laughs> you know my Spanglish? Pedro is coming out. This um, is what you normally don't hear on the edited versions. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, when it says uh, in verse 10 of Galatians 1, it says, For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. And then it breaks it up and it says, Paul called by God, right? And I think it still flows with that thought of verse 11. So, uh, a lot of times... Yes, they're helpful, but sometimes these chapter and verse subdivisions or divisions uh, can be a hindrance. I mean, it's great to memorize Scripture and, and, and know where it's at. Um, you ever talk to somebody and says, doesn't the Bible say, uh, and they don't know the verse. <laughs> they're not even reciting it. Like mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't name it's any examples. It's something like that. <laughs> yeah. I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but yeah, I've heard what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I, I hear it a lot. <laughs> you know, when people, doesn't the Bible say, and I kind of know, because I know God's word. I mean, I, I don't know, know it from cover to cover, but I, I know enough of scripture that when somebody tells me, and it sounds kind of like, I'll know where to go, you know. Um, so that's why it's important to memorize Scripture, to know Scripture, because, you know, uh, if you're overflowing with verses, if you're overflowing with God's Word that you've stored up, when, uh, you know, when you are alone and nobody is there to preach to you the word of God, your memory has to kick in. And the Bible says you're not alone. The Holy Spirit will remind you of what Jesus said. But 
in order to remind you, he's yeah, gonna, he's gotta, dwell, he's gotta have something to draw from. And you never read God's word. The Holy Spirit ain't got much to work with there. So we need to be in the word. We need to know God's word. We need to memorize God's word, read God's word, saturate God's word. Have I said that enough? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully if you haven't done your Bible reading plan, you're still reading, you pick it up, uh, you know, I, I, we were doing it, but we stopped, um, we were doing it together, but we should pick up on it again. I, I, I like going through, so we will get Galatians and we'll try to read it all the way through. We did that with Romans in two sittings, remember? Yes. So, I mean, that's, I like to ingest God's word and preferably, you know, a book in context, uh, you get so much out of it. Uh, we read John in what was it two sittings or three sittings? I think it was three. Yeah. So uh, you know, uh, we went through Matthew, we went through Mark. So we're, you know, uh, if you're in the Word and you're reading the Word and you're feeding on the Word, um, and then you study the Word, you know. Uh, so when one of the things that I really enjoy about preaching is, you know, having to study for the book. Uh, what is, you know, who are you write to? Why is he saying this? Uh, you know, who's his audience? Who wrote it? You know, uh, who's writing it? Um, so uh, Galatians is such a rich, rich book uh, that, that just combats error uh heresy that was so teaching that was distorting the grace of Christ that he uses the harshest language uh imaginable and he's saying may they be damned may they be destroyed may they be accursed may they go to hell uh whoever is troubling you with these false teachings um this is, I mean, it's, it's when you get into the word of God and you get the word of God into you, uh, that's the best thing you can do for yourself, for the people you love. Um, so when you're, when you're uh, writing scripture, I mean writing scripture, reading scripture and memorizing it and storing it up in your heart, it just, it, 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 it's the best thing. And, you know. Uh, I said this earlier, but sin will keep you from God's word and God's word will keep you from sin. According to Psalm 119 verse 11, Thy word have I stored up in my heart. I think the King James, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So, uh, I like the King James version, um, in that passage. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I uh, like that you are doing that um, for your edification, uh, for, but it's not only for your edification. One day when God puts disciples in your path, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to help you. It's going to help you. Uh, so, you know, uh, I've, there's other brothers that tell me, you know, I, I really like that you memorize god's word you can quote god i don't always have a bible you know i'm at work i don't have a bible um but i have my memory you know thank god still <laughs> <laughs> i'm preserving what i have in there already so but uh yeah i use uh i use that program um uh script the, scripture typer yeah scripture typer and it looks like a like an open red Bible with a cross in it, um, almost like a crest, a shield. Um, and so that helps me, it's helped me uh, memorize um, some, some portions of scripture. And I've refreshed the ones that I already know. So, um, yeah, I, I hope uh, that you guys are encouraged uh, 
I'm I'm impressed that you uh, memorized. It's how long is it? It's thirteen um, verses. Thirteen yeah. verses. Yeah. How long is uh, Luke sixteen nineteen through? Let me read. How many verses would that be? So sixteen nineteen. Thirty one through thirty one. So that's almost what? That's twelve verses. Okay. But they're longer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um we hope that uh this episode uh is helpful to you, uh that encouraged you. Uh, uh we don't want to discourage you. We wanna encourage you to get into the word of God, to get the word of God into you, to make uh there's so much technology now that we can study god's word i i have logos bible software uh it makes um so this this is what part of my library here we're it, we're recording in our den um so over here to josiah's right um or your left uh it's uh part of my library but i have huge commentaries and I usually study and prepare my sermons in my bedroom, which is across the way. And um, if I type in my logos, then I can bring it up, and it just it, it'll bring up relevant verses. Or if I'm looking for a certain word, I don't have to come and dig and get a book. And I, I love books, but you know when when I need it fast and it makes studying so much faster uh you, you know there's so much technology available that facilitates the learning of god's word the memorizing of god's word that the the ancients the people before us didn't have and and yet how much of god's word that they knew that puts us to shame you know, they mm -hmm. can you imagine knowing all of Genesis, all of Exodus, all of Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy by memory? Uh, that's incredible. And, you know, we can't even bother to memorize <laughs> five verses, you know, in context, a, a, a psalm, you know, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside the still waters. He, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. You know, he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So you're going through it. You need to be able to draw from the word of God. So we want to encourage you uh, to get into the word of God. It's never too late to memorize scripture. Uh, it's never too late to teach an old dog like myself new tricks, okay? Um, speaking of tricks, uh, sometimes I know so many magic tricks that it's like I get confused. <laughs> you confuse them together? Because, I, I, yeah, I, I know so much, and it's like it makes it hard, but, you know, God, you know, help us that we would have that problem with knowing so much of his word that we have an abundance of a flood of scriptures that would come to our minds, you know. Um, so the word of God is living and active, and it's what, you know, changes our hearts, discerns our, ha our hearts. It discerns the thoughts and the intentions of our heart, and it cuts through the division of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So we need to take up God's word. We need to read God's word, you know, highlight whatever helps you. Um, like I said, I, I use you version. I have the word of God read to me. Uh, I, I find it that, when I hear it, it's it's it, it just 
impacts me and and it's like um faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of god it's not it doesn't say reading okay you have to remember uh they memorized they didn't have a bible in their house and they yet they memorized god's word how how did that happen they took it very seriously yeah and they they were re- so uh some 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 people don't know you know jesus said come and follow me okay so therefore they had to give up their job they had to give up their day job they followed their rabbi and they intentionally memorized what he was teaching that is how they wrote the new testament that's how they wrote the gospels they memorized uh, very purposefully God's word. So uh, when it came time for them to write their gospel, they had they had it memorized. They what he taught, they had it memorized. So uh, you and I, we need to hide God's word. We need to study God's word. And we need to learn God's word, memorize it. So, again, uh, I don't want to sound redundant. Uh, We're going on almost shy of an hour. But I hope that this has encouraged you, uh, that this episode has blessed you, and that uh, all glory goes to God. And so we, we should memorize God's word, not so that we can show off, but when the time comes, somebody's hurting. Somebody is going through a hard time, a struggle, and we can minister to them. We can give them the word in season, right? We can give them a word of wisdom because wisdom comes from the word of God. Uh, wisdom is not just... Wisdom is applied knowledge. So we need to know God's word in order to apply God's word. And then that's wisdom being exercised. And so not James says, don't be hearers of God's word, but be doers because otherwise we deceive ourselves. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, this episode of Coffee House Theology. Uh, I hope that uh, you uh, share it with the people you love and even the people you don't, right, sir? Exactly. And please uh, like, share, subscribe, do all those thingamajiggies that... uh, Support the channel. Support the channel. uh, They help us with the algorithms and, uh, you know, uh, hit the rumbles, uh, share it with people. Um, hit the notification bell so that you're notified of when we put an episode. Um, I like that we can do Facebook Live. Um, if we had enough subscribers, I need a hundred to be able to do that on YouTube, but uh, we don't have enough. So uh, we're doing Facebook Live, uh, even though my son didn't want to. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I hope this episode and podcast was beneficial to you. I hope you uh, enjoy it. Uh, and uh, please uh, get into God's word. It'll, it'll bless your life. It'll help your life. And uh, to God alone be the glory. Until next time, uh, remember that. Uh, theology matters. Sorry, you threw me a curveball a little bit. I, <laughs> I forgot our own <laughs> slogan. <laughs> theology matters. How you view God determines the way you live your life. And theology I, matters. What you he believe says about matter. God <laughs> affects, affects the way you live your life. You live your life. So uh, remember, theology matters. And Christ is King, and to Him alone be the glory. Until next time. I'm Jose, and this is Josiah, and we'll see you on the next one. God bless. Bye.